Hey everyone, Spring Boot 4 was just released three days ago, so we're going to dive in into the new features and check what's changed and what is improved uh, so you can use on your daily basis development. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Arley, so let's dive into the video. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that Spring Boot uh, is running on the top of Spring Framework ecosystem. So, which means that Spring Boot is part of this ecosystem. And Spring Framework was recently released, the new version. So, right now is in the version 7. And the most important feature that was released in this new version is support for Java 25. That means that Spring Boot also supports Java 25. Okay, so the first topic here is the complete modularization of Spring Boot. What it means? Uh, means that uh, internally, uh, Spring Boot was organized into uh, smaller modules. Which means that after you build your application and you get your jar file, your jar file will contains only the dependencies that your application really needs. So with that, you you get your application lighter and you also you you also uh, uh, start your application faster because remember you don't have dependencies that your application don't need. So this is one of the biggest changes internally of Spring Boot since the first version. The second topic here is the first class support for Java 25. So uh, officially Spring Boot supports Java 25. It will also support Java 17. So if your application uses Java 17, you can still use uh, migrate to your new version of Spring Boot. So here, the main changes is about performance because the Java virtual machine, it will be optimized for, for your applications. So that's why Java 25 is, is uh, all about and Spring Boot supports it. And uh, the third topic here, the next topic is about the new safety with JSpecify. J specify. Uh, so here is one topic that uh, is very interesting for for us Java developers because no point exception is one of the most known uh, errors that you can get in uh, runtime in, in runtime uh, of your application. So here we have a new ways to work with no point exceptions. Uh, the basically the IDE will be able to detect. Uh, the parts of your code that can can throw a no point exception so you'll be alerted by the, your IDE so you have new features about that um, the next topic is the fourth uh, which is about official API versioning support uh, the, this uh, is another very important one because uh, before in Spring Boot you uh, you manage manually your your versions because you need to create a new endpoints and uh, maybe change your 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 objects that are you know used on your endpoint. For example, for a post uh, for a post HTTP post, you receive a uh, a, a uh, uh, I don't know maybe a object that contains 10, 10 attributes. Now you need to change it, so you had to change uh, you had to create a new controller rest controller for example and uh, right now here uh, we have officially a, a way, a way uh, supported by the new version of spring boot um, the next topic here is a very important one because it's the http service clients uh, what is what is a, a service clients uh, when you're building your application usually you need to uh, you know uh, you need to access an a, a endpoint that is outside your application for example you need to uh, integrate your application with uh, AI for instance for example chat GPT if you need to do that you need to send a request HTTP request to a server or in, in this case to uh, a chat gpt endpoint for sending a message and get the information the response from that api so you need to implement the entire code uh, that you send this request uh, with this new implementation you have interfaces that uh, will help us with that 
we use, we will tell the interface uh, what is the endpoint that we need to access and we pass information with the parameters if you need and you you uh, we need to uh, we will be able to get that information from the, this this request so it will be easier uh, to create this this uh, uh, HTTP request because before you can use REST template for example that you need to you know call the entire the entire uh, uh, part of that that you need sometimes you had to create a generic REST template for you to you know to use in your your app or even if you're you were using for example uh, uh, microservices so you can use Fang to do that or even a uh, web client to do that so now you have this feature that will help you a lot with that and in our topic number six uh, is the better startup and initialization impl improvements uh, what it means uh, uh, because of you know the new version of Spring Boot is uh, organized in smaller modules which means that your application you only start what your application needed so because of that you have faster code starts so say, uh, which means that your application will start faster you have better for cloud and kubernetes what it means it means that you use less memory uh, you you you'll be able to start and uh, use in in uh, for example kubernetes or docker uh, in a more effective way and uh, we have the reduce of memory usage uh, which means that your application is, is smaller so it will be lighter to start for example it will be smaller so you the reduce it will reduce your memory usage um, to, um, this 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 part of spring boot you'll be more uh, you know noticed nursed noticeable uh, by the ones that are deploying on for example Azure or for example on AWS or and etc so our next topic here the topic uh, uh, seven is the migration nodes. Uh, what is very important in here? Because um, uh, if you migrate your application uh, from from you know maybe for Spring Boot three, for example, to the the Spring Boot four, you have to be careful with a few things. Because for example, uh, uh, Jackson three plus Java EE uh, eleven. Uh, you know the Jackson is responsible for your JSON serialization uh, for example so you have to be careful with that because it could affect your the way of serialization of your objects so you have to be careful with that and uh, with that we basically we end our presentation with these uh, uh, seven topics um, uh, to be uh, a more specific here um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video about the topic five here because i think that personally uh, as i mentioned before uh this is the most uh impact important one for me because i usually need to create my rest template or web client uh implementation uh, and this sometimes this is very uh, uh complex because sometimes you need to to implement a lot of code so you could access your your client from different types of, of classes and different objects and different apis for example uh, maybe you can you need to to implement your application to contact uh, you know uh, uh, get a contact information from website get uh, 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 information from chat GPT and etc and you need to uh, uh, be able to use genetics to do that so I'm gonna build a new video I'm gonna m make a video about the HTTP service and I'm gonna uh, uh, make it available here on the YouTube channel and that's it for now guys so if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel thank you for watching and until next time